Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we will be covering the topic of RAM type steering gear system and the design that we will be focusing upon is the 4 RAM type design. Now let us start with the present RAM type steering gear topic. The entire idea behind the steering gear system is to maneuver the ship whether it is out at sea or in tight restricted waters and move it from one port to another port safely. So, it is important that the steering gear communication is established clearly between the bridge and the local steering gear arrangement. This also incorporates emergency steering system as well as local and remote signaling as well as control system. Now, how does this system translate into the motion of the ram type steering gear? The ram type steering gear system also uses the principle of hydraulic fluid and its inherent advantage to move heavier objects or heavier aids with the least amount of effort possible. So now let us see how it puts this principle into use. As we can see the central storage tank is connected to the individual units of storage tanks through a dedicated line and manual or auto pumping system which allows us to segregate the system further into unit 1 or unit 2. What this means is that at all points of time we have at least one unit and optimally two units to operate the 4 RAM type design. Now each unit would have a dedicated variable displacement pump that draws suction from the dedicated storage tank of that particular unit. This variable delivery pump then sends the oil further. Over here we have direction control valve. So this direction control valve is the one which is responsible for the trajectory that the oil flows. For example, when the direction control valve moves towards the left hand side, what it does is that it allows the oil to pass and then flow into the network that goes towards the right and enter this ramp. So when hydraulic oil enters this ramp, it pushes the ramp and by doing so, what it does is it creates a lateral motion of the ramp within the cylinder. This ramp is further connected to a crosshead and swivel block assembly. This crosshead and swivel block assembly is the one that translates the linear motion of the ramp into the rotary motion of the rudder stock and therefore the rudder. As we can see here that the rudder stock and on the lower end through the rudder carrier bearing is connected to the rudder itself and thus this linear motion gets translated into the angular motion of the rudder. Now as we can see that in this direction control wall there is another branch that is coming inwards. When we allow the oil to flow in towards one system, what happens is that the oil would come back into the other line. For example, if my cylinder is accommodating oil and allowing the ram to move, then my crosshead and swivel block assembly moves the entire tiller mechanism and therefore the angular turn, what it does is it allows the other two ramps to enter a state where the oil is compressed and sent back into the line. By doing so, what happens is that this oil returns and is then allowed to track back into a way that allows it to flow back into the storage tank of the dedicated unit. And this flow back occurs through the magnetic filter which would collect and separate any kind of debris or wear particles and then keep the oil clean. In between this, we can see there is another block. This is the auto isolating wall. Now, as we know that this 4 ram steering gear system has 100% redundancy, which means that at all points of time, what happens is even if one particular set of ram is inoperational due to any leakage, this isolating valve will make sure that the branchings of the further network are isolated and also that particular system is isolated to make sure that no loss of oil occurs due to interconnection between this unit and those unit ramps and then keeping the steering gear 100% efficient. So upon detecting that leak due to subsequent pressure drop, what this isolating wall will do is it would isolate the further network and thus make sure that the steering gear is operating at optimum efficiency. The network would also comprise of auto bypass walls and also shock relief walls in the network. So what they will do is that if the oil is supposed to circulate without operational condition within the network itself, it will keep the oil running in a tank to tank condition through the bypass valve assembly. And for the shock relief wall, what it would do is that 
let's suppose if there is a sudden load or sudden burst of load onto the steering gear system and the oil is contracting all of a sudden so the restriction of space what it would do is it would damage the ramp therefore that particular oil is allowed to get relieved from the relief valve assembly and then get back into the network the ram and the cylinder are sealed from the outer space with the help of peripheral seals which are there on the arm of the ram itself and just like the stuffing box assembly or where different kinds of piston assemblies that we have in different engines the same way these seals seal the space between the ram and the cylinder so that the reciprocation chamber is completely sealed and therefore the oil is not allowed to leak into the outer area any oil that is dripping from this particular region into the outer area is an indicative of the seals being worn out also as i said that the carrier bearing which is underneath the rudder stock area would have different lubrication lines to make sure it is always in a well lubricated condition so as to make sure that there is no wear down in the unit now as already discussed the carrier and the swivel block assembly is the one which is responsible for converting the linear motion of the ram into the translational motion and therefore the rotation of the rudder about its axis and therefore the trunnion and the ram crosshead is connected to the tiller under the swivel block assembly also the strength member provides the girder connection to the cylinders now what is important is to see that there is a certain amount of wear limit allowed for the steering gear within this assembly to accommodate as the rudder wear down limit the idea behind this is that due to harsh weather conditions due to self weight and due to usage over a prolonged period of time the steering gear as a virtue of all the previously mentioned factors can sit a little lower due to the existing conditions and therefore the wear down limit allows this scope and makes sure that no additional weight is borne upon the ramps as well as the other connecting members and therefore no extra damage is levied upon them also to further check the clearances we know that within the pintel side we can check with the help of the feeler gauges and also simultaneously during the dry dock inspections we can check the jumping clearance and therefore all these together would make sure that the different clearances within the rudder and the steering gear assembly are the prescribed limits and therefore they make sure that no additional weight is borne and the wear down rate is optimum within the steering gear assembly of the four ram type design it is also important to understand that the level switches within the individual tank as well as the main tank should always be under operational condition because these are the critical alarms that are in the steering gear system the level of the oil within the storage tank is important to maintain at this level because even the slightest of air bubble ingress into the system can lead to severe damages of the hydraulic circuit the pump as well as the ram design and the ram system so this will be visible and audible to us in the form of severe vibration and high pitched noise and therefore any watch keeper going on the round has to make sure that upon observing the steering gear we have to check the oil through the level gauge or the side glass and also to carefully listen the sound of the steering gear operation during heavy weather as well as normal running condition the cross connection through the isolating wall and this entire network also makes sure that the ram design can be operated simultaneously however it is also ideal to understand that before operating the other unit that is into the other side of the operation we have to make sure that the unit previously running is shut off so that there is no contradiction in the movement and therefore no excessive load on the corresponding unit in addition to this it has to be made sure that all the lines are in well secured condition and they are secured with clamps rubber paddings and all the other vibration damping arrangements that we have because as i said earlier that due to heavy weather condition as well as the other external factors influencing the area of the steering gear these lines are vulnerable and susceptible to damages and therefore leakages and again these minor leakages are the one which can lead into a catastrophic failure of the steering gear so quick and prompt response is extremely essential and so is continuous monitoring of the lines and the system
I hope that the explanation is clear enough for you to understand the working of the intricacies of a RAM type steering gear system and if any doubt still persists, do feel comfortable to drop into the comment section and let us know. Please do make sure to share our videos with your colleagues and subscribe to our channel and help us grow together. Thank you.